Hey good people, Batavia here. Let's see how the gardens responded to our first frost. See you in a few. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. Thank you to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Garden. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. And if you do hit the notification bell, you'll be alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. All right, so there's some videos from these previous weeks where I've shared my preparation. Morning. Where I've shared my preparation, right? We've pulled out tomatoes, peppers. Uh, we've done some things with root vegetables. I'll link those videos if you're interested. But today, we actually have gotten to 32 degrees. Uh, this is the first of what's going to be probably a few nights of those temps getting that low. Uh, so I've done some things here, and I want to share that with you. First, let's look at kind of the current state of the garden. It's just before 8 a.m. here in Chicago. I'm in Chicago, Illinois. My garden zone six. Uh, so just before 8 a.m. and it's going to warm up during the day. So first we'll take a look at what things look like now. We'll come back in a couple of days after we've had a couple of frost to see again how some of these things that are kind of on the borderline of being frost hardy have really responded and other things have bounced back. So let's dig in. Prepare some of these things that are a little bit tender. <laughs> Alrighty, so some things like these begonias um, aren't having this frost, which is fine. Didn't expect them to survive. Weren't trying to save them. I'm glad my lemon balm, though, is doing okay. There's a little bit of damage and some of the leaves you can see kind of that scalding. Um, but most of them are just fine. Um, the Russian kale is here and it is fine. Didn't expect any issues with that. Moving along. I still have some pretty young tenderlings, so things like this. That's either lettuce or radishes, and they're just getting their true leaves. And so while they may have been okay if they were a little bit more mature, I didn't want to take the chance. Over here, I'm not as concerned about this container, just based on what's still in it. So I left this out. Carrots, we know, are fine when it comes to these colder temps. This is, again, kind of radishes that are just getting their true leaves. Vivid pak choy and a mixture of beets, which I think is pretty cool. You can actually see the glossiness on those leaves. Um, and these, I believe, are the white avalanche, which should be fine um, based on them being labeled frost tolerant. But we'll see. Um, this is our Claytonia miners lettuce. Yeah, that's the name. And um, it's super cold tolerant. So. I'm not at all concerned about it, even at this young state. Take a quick look. Um, we'll come back and take a look at how this lettuce has done. I covered it because a lot of your like really thin leaf veggies don't play well with frost and uh, freezing temps. So I still have some lettuce to eat off of those containers and I wanted to try to protect it. Our kale is just fine here. Again, not that concerned. Rosemary that's still sitting in its starter pot still looks fine. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I may put that in a pot and put it under cover for the winter. Uh, we have collards. No issues. Ford hook chard. Again, it's that glossiness, um, which I'm expecting, and kind of the stiffness of the leaves. Um, I have not been able to keep this through like the winter. I was chatting with another gardener uh, on YouTube and it was pretty hardy for them over the winter. So this is probably just going to survive for another couple of weeks until I get around to enjoying those greens. Our red cabbage, no worries. A pepper plant that doesn't have any peppers on it, I left out because I ran out of room in the garage for things that I was storing until I got to them. Vivid pak choy, just beautiful. Um, and this is another example of that's a vegetable that can take a couple of hits um, but it won't survive many uh, so let's move along collard greens they will return to their lushness before we know it uh, we have our kohlrabi which looks pretty good although it you know clearly didn't have many leaves coming into this arugula 
I'm really pleased with this red mustard. These are pretty young plants, but they look really good coming out of this frost. All of these plants basically have not been covered. So whatever I covered, you'll see it now. And then we'll uncover it when we come back. These are our turnips, um, which look a little bit limp, but I'm hopeful. More vivid pak choy, which um, again, tattered leaves, but I think a couple of times you know we'll get through this um the container here has a bunch of i believe radishes and it actually was just covered to keep critters out of it from digging and these are pretty young still this container looks pretty good um there's some kale some mustards kohlrabi now one of the things that may be may have been a casualty of me running out of time so nasturtiums I've read will not take off a freeze and so these look pretty limp the ones in the front yard look better um, but I need to get to these because I still want to make that nasturtium pesto and I don't want to chance it let's get inside of the cage baby real quick so these are a bunch of radishes I sowed um, and I didn't look to see if this particular variety was frost tolerant I'm probably going to end up harvesting these just for the leaves if they bounce back. They don't look to be setting roots. Um, so I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Oregano that we tucked in, these transplants we bought kind of late summer look okay. Um, let's see if we can go through this way. I'm really taking a chance here. <laughs> so just real quick, a different look at the cage baby. We're still doing some work out here probably should have just used the door so that's the kale I'm stepping on the wood in here instead of uh, the soil so this is another container of kale that's been growing since earlier on I actually really am checking out this uh, purple kale it seems completely unfazed by these tints maybe a little bit of drooping with some of these older leaves um, but that's something to make a note of for me all right so let's get out of here and take a look at what's left Oh, as a quick note, I've had these windows, I have like three or four of them for a long while, and I'm trying to get up the courage to try to build out cold frames. Probably looks like more of maybe next spring, but we'll see. Okay, so mustards, which probably don't stand a chance. Um, I am curious about if this is going to overwinter. More nasturtiums that have wilted I probably wasn't going to use those anyway which is fine as far as that um, pesto goes more kale let's look inside of this cage so this kale is doing exactly what I thought it was going to do you see some crystals on uh, the leaves here I saw the same thing on the cage or in the collards here which I probably forgot to show but it's just a really cool view right um, but I'm certain these will be fine um, let's let's take a look at the front yard real quick oh I forgot so in here are seedlings um, they are containers that have pretty young seedlings in them so a lot of them haven't really developed their true leaves so there's some that are maybe a little bit older and I just didn't think that they were really frost tolerant. So I left them covered under plastic. The end goal is to move those containers and any containers that I want to try to extend the growing season for. They'll go into that bed over there with the green um, fencing. And we'll basically put the hoops on this bed and put the plastic on this bed. Because here is where we're going to go grow garlic um, and yeah it's November the 3rd and I still haven't planted my garlic uh, I'm running out of time but I'm still hopeful so our tender green mustard it's my first time growing them and I took a chance I left them out they had bounced back beautifully from um, the damage the cabbage worm damage from earlier but I did cover these and if we get in my head for just a second the idea is if the frost really damaged them perhaps this level of cover with just a simple towel will preserve them so some of this is just trying to see how much I can push the envelope um, and mostly to know for next year quick notes 
forward hook chart again. Still pretty firm, right? Setting it up straight. This is the nasturtium that seemed unfazed. I came out of the front door this morning and I'm like, oh cool, the nasturtium is just fine. And um, I don't know why, but this one is a little bit more lively than the one in the back. So quick note for flowers. Um, I've seen like near snow on um, marigolds, so I wasn't concerned. And I want to try to save some of these, so I'm letting these die back. And my dahlias, first time growing tubers, using tubers, and um, I want to wait until they die back the actual leaves and, and stuff so I can dig up the tubers at least that's what I read you should be doing <laughs> so uh, if we look over here and I know I know I'm trying not to get sad about kind of the state the gardens in it's part of the process right look at this one ah, poor thing Okie doke, so we're back. It is actually three weeks later. So I did do an update for the second half of this video three days after the top half. But since it hadn't aired and it's still been pretty cold, I thought I'd show you guys what the garden looks like. Three weeks later, we've since had at least seven nights, early mornings, of temperatures that have gotten down to freezing and below. Um, and we've gotten as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So the garden has gone through freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing. And I want to show you guys what everything looks like. All right, so the lemon balm over here, clearly, you know, it hasn't made it through this extended weather. Um, when I talk about freezing temps for me, um, it hasn't been a consistent week of freezing temps. Um, that's the Russian kale, but it has been kind of as warm as 50 degrees. And then for a couple of days, we'll get closer and closer to freezing. And then we hit the freezing temps and so on. So um, luckily at this time of year, we don't normally see like all day long temps dropping to freezing. Um, so that's been a benefit. And it rained last night, which wasn't expected. Otherwise I would have pulled off these towels. Um, everything down here is still alive. Carrots still look good. I did pull up uh, some of the leafy greens that were here. We still have some um, beets there. Our Claytonia looks fine. Oh, the lettuce. I did get a chance to harvest all of the lettuce that was here. That was the uh, mescaline mix, I think. And this I thought was the same thing, but it definitely looks different. Um, so I'm not sure if that's actually going to get into the house and get eaten, but that's what it looks like now. Um, so still with the rosemary, right? Uh, some of the kale, some of the leaves have gone bad. I've eaten quite a bit more kale in these last few weeks. Um, our collards in the container, which go all the way back to the spring, they are trying to liven back up after we had the last set of freezing temps. Um, the char looks good. Uh, celery looks good. Uh, let's see. I'm going to open up this cage. And as you can see from the top half of the video, we've switched some things up. So I've since planted my garlic. I'll link the video for that. Curly kale looks awesome. I'll open this up. And there's a short, um, like a one minute video where I kind of show some of the angles of building this. Um, which I really like this cage. I uh, can open it with one hand. There are just some sharp edges which I have to figure out how to improve on. I've already scratched myself. Uh, but the kale looks good. I had this other kale in here. Which is in just a 10 gallon grow bag. Um, it looks okay. It doesn't look as great as the kale that's in that bed. It was planted at the same time. The same transplants. Uh, this kale over here <laughs> not looking that great so so much so for this being uber party uh, these leaves are still edible They'll, they may spring back it's a little bit shadier here than other spaces in the garden alrighty so we have the radishes um, which have been doing well since some of these nights have been colder than others I've put some cover on them but I have one or two in the front yard garden that self sowed and um, they seem to be unbothered so I'm probably going to leave these uncovered especially because the towels are wet now. One of the casualties has been and I've just given myself a little grace here it's been the nasturtium so I never got a chance to harvest that 
um, knew that it would be a challenge in these colder, colder temps. And yeah, so we're going to end up once we do our kind of put the garden to bed, we'll clean this stuff up. Uh, the wall over here, check out these fat <laughs> cabbage worms. They are still, even through this weather, alive and eating. I'll pick those up out of the uh, off of the leaves once I get done here. So this is a place where I have noticed some real growth. So these are, yeah, it looks like they're white. The icicle radishes, just looking from inside here. And so I remember this at the top of the video, so three weeks ago, and they were much smaller, the leaves were. Uh, Vivid pak choy, my turnips. I'm hoping to get some bottoms out of this, the actual roots. Uh, but the leaves look pretty good. Uh, arugula. And remember, a lot of these leaves have been tattered since the um, earlier when the weather was warmer in September. But check out my mustards. And we have some up front as well. Nothing really to share or be impressed about in this container. But my collards have bounced back. I've gotten two harvests off of this since we last had the update at the top half of the video. Um, and I have one more big harvest that I have to share next week with a friend. So pretty pleased with this bed. There's some general cleanup that needs to happen. But let's go up front and show you the mustards. So I've been collecting leaves and I didn't realize it was going to rain last night. Otherwise I would have put these in the garage. But uh, yeah. So our mustards, let's get these off which I've continually been told they're pretty hardy, so probably didn't need this kind of cover, um, but just in case. So other than being smushed by the towels, they look wonderful. Oh, I can't wait. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the mustards and the turnip tops in the back and just cook those up together. This is the Ford Hook chard, which continues to look pretty hardy, we'll see. I totally forgot to show y'all what is under here. So this is the mixture of kind of containers. So I'm going to take this cover off and I'll be back in just a sec. Super pleased. So all of these containers were in the other raised bed on the other side where the garlic is now planted. So it looks like I still have lettuce to be grown <laughs> and harvested. There has been growth. Um, not so much in these containers, and you can actually see how they're leaning, you know, tilted that way, looking for some sun. But the beets still look good. Um, this is, yeah, I'm not sure anymore, some leafy green. But that looks pretty good. Um, I clearly went a little bit crazy on the radishes, <laughs> so there's some more planted there. And then there's still a couple that I left to grow a little bit longer that are actually in the raised bed. This raised bed had... Uh, spinach and radishes in it. I'll link the video if you're interested in seeing kind of that harvest, but yeah. Okay, doke. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to drop them below, and I shall see you all in the next one.